Hello, I'm Reverend Steve Killam. I'm the senior pastor here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and we are so glad that you chose to take time out of your precious day to join us. I have a couple of things to go over before we get started. Number one, it is getting warm. Summer is just around the corner, and that means that a lot of us could be moving in, moving out, traveling around. If you're in the Lufkin area, and you have watched us and you have worshiped with us online and you would like to worship with us in person, uh, our physical address is 1505 South John Reddit Drive in Lufkin, Texas, and that's on the South Loop. Uh, we're actually a fairly small church, but we would love to have you come and join us. If you live in Lufkin and you're looking for a church home, again, we're at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas, and we worship at 11 a.m., 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Also, if you wish to uh, give us an offering, uh, send us an offering by mail, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 921. That's Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code is 75902. Uh, you can also check us out at www.stpaulslufkin.com. That is our website. Or you, you're seeing us now on, uh, on Facebook. So any way, every way uh, that, that you can hook up with us, uh, it's, it's, if it's whatever is easiest for you, we surely appreciate you taking time out of your busy, busy day. Now that we have that out of the water, out of the way, let's go ahead and, and start our worship. Sit back, relax, and let the Holy Spirit just take you on. Go fi win. Amen. Over the next couple of minutes, you're going to hear a, a particular phrase over and over. Uh, whenever I end my prayers, it's always the same way. It's go fight, win, amen. Now, there is a reason that I do it that way. Number one, my, my senior Sunday school teacher ended her prayers that way, and I thought it was cool. But there's another thing, uh, and the, the explanation is that when, when Jesus tells us to do things, he tells us to go, to go get outside the four walls of the church to go out in the community. So that's the go. Now, it's not always going to be easy. Matter of fact, most of the time it's going to be very difficult. Life can be challenging, and that's where the fight comes in. You've got to give it all you've got. You've got to want it. You've got to go out and take what you can get. And the win comes as long as Jesus is with you. As long as we are in it with God, we will win. So go fight, win, amen.
Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us participating in this service today. Let it be something that's absolutely wonderful, inspiring. We ask these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. Let's join in our profession of faith this morning. Our profession of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come the judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. things that we do here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church during the summer months is uh, we do what's known as Vacation Bible School for Grown-Ups, VBS for Grown-Ups. And this year we're going to do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, July 18th, 19th, and 20th. It starts at 5.30, and we usually go a couple of hours. Uh, we, we have some light food, we, we, do, we sing, we do crafts, uh, and then we have Bible study. It is a lot of fun. I invite you to come. Uh, join us at 1505 South John Reddit Drive. Uh, tell your family, tell your friends. Uh, you'll be glad you did. I, at this time, let us go to our Lord in silent prayer and reflection. Dear Lord, we are so glad uh, to be in this time of springtime to where we can see the world <coughs> awakening around us. Where we see the grass green, we see all the trees that are, are green and, and all the flowers that are around. And it just reminds us of you and your Holy Spirit that are always with us throughout every season. 
Lord, we, we want to lift up our, our educators and our children as we come to the end of another school year. Uh, we ask that you be with them so that they keep them safe as they, as they do things at the end of the year and as they look forward to their summer. Uh, but we know that, that in this time it can be very, very difficult to focus. We ask that you be with, with all of those that are involved, whether it be the students, the teachers, the paraprofessionals, the bus drivers, whoever and whatever. Lord, we also know that even in this time of springtime, even in this time of renewal, even in this time where, where it's just so wonderful to be out, uh, that, that there are several of us that are facing obstacles, whether it be uh, with, with physical health. We ask that you be with them so that they can get better, so that uh, they can uh, be with their doctors and the, the nurses and the paraprofessionals and the techs that do such a wonderful job of helping us heal. We also know that there are those that are fighting mental uh, problems, and we ask that you be with them so that, that some of those things can just uh, not be as earth-shattering as they can sometimes be because we know that as long as you are with them, that the anxiety that can come through our world can also be overcome by you. Lord, we know that there are those that live in areas of chaos, whether it be because of wartime, whether it be because of uh, natural disasters or any other disasters. We ask that you be with those people so that they can find strength and comfort through you. But most of all, we lift up your son, Jesus Christ. We lift up the gospel of his birth, his life, his teaching, his death and resurrection. And together we lift up that prayer that he taught us when he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When I was young, you called my name. I tried to run, but you still came And you stepped into the dark Cause that's just the kind of God you are When heaven seems beyond my reach You still see eternity in me you're turning ashes into art Cause that's just the kind of God you are It's in the empty tomb It's on the rugged cross Your death-defying love Is written in your scars You'll never quit on me You'll always hold my heart Cause that's the kind of God you gave me freedom from my sin You told me I could start again All the hurt is dead and gone Now we're your daughters and your sons Amazing grace, how sweet the sound we once were lost, but now we're found Forever you hold us in your hands Cause that's just the kind of God you are It's in the empty tomb It's on the rugged cross Your death-defying love Is written in your scars You'll never quit on me You'll always hold my heart Cause that's the kind of God you are You are holy, holy, holy High and set apart You are holy, holy, holy God that's who Holy, holy
It's on the rugged cross, your death-defying love It's written in your scars, you'll never quit on me You'll always hold my heart, cause that's the kind of God you are It's in the empty tomb, it's on the rugged cross Your death-defying love it's written in your scars You'll never quit on me You'll always hold my heart Cause that's the kind of God you are When I was young you called my name I tried to run but you still came and you stepped into the dark Cause that's just the kind of God you are Tater. Hey, Chip. I haven't seen you around much lately. Is everything okay? 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 No! Everything is not okay! Okay? Would you like to talk about it? Would I? I believe that was the question. I would. The reason you haven't seen me much is that I have been very busy. I see. Doing what? I have been acting again. Oh, that's right. You have a play coming up soon. Actually, it ended last week. <laughs> Way to have your finger on the pulse. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was it any good? I'll let you decide from the critics' responses. The New York Times said... Tater is a knockout! Everything he touches turns to gold. A regular Midas. Uh-huh. And Variety said, Tater is a god. Never has the stage seen such talent and insight. If you ever see Tater on stage, if you've never seen him on stage, you haven't experienced life as it was meant to live. <laughs> they didn't really say that, did they? I don't know. <laughs> I don't read the New York Times or Variety. <laughs> Shocker. Stop the presses. <laughs> but they might have. <laughs> they should have. I'm a theater god! <laughs> Watch it! Watch what? Did someone record my performance? Josh! Roll that beautiful tater footage! <laughs> no! Watch calling yourself a god. The one god doesn't care much for false gods. I'm pretty true. <laughs> <sighs> you are pretty arrogant. Does that mean talented? Then yes, I am. <laughs> no, it means... Never mind. There is only one God. Oh, and who is that? Tater, it's God. Oh. And we can get in big trouble if we forget that. Chip, I know that God is, like you said, God. But what about those of us who are exceptional? <laughs> what are we? Arrogant. I knew it! I am very arrogant! <laughs> yes, yes you are. Sometimes. Oh, don't kid yourself. I think I'm pretty arrogant all of the time. <laughs> Whatever you say! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Let's pray. Everyone bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, help us remember that you are God. Help us remember that you are God. That you are the only God. That you are the only God. You are amazing and everlasting. You are amazing and everlasting. 
And we always want to praise you. And we always want to praise you. So that the world will know that. So that the world will know that. Amen. 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 Don't you wish you are were arrogant like me? No. One extremely arrogant puppet is all about anyone can handle. <laughs> so say goodbye, Tater. Goodbye, Tater, and hello, Broadway! <laughs> Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, verses 22 through 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands, and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands." God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far away from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds, and help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. You know, we are using the Acts part of the lectionary in this Easter tide, uh, these, these, these Sundays after Easter but before Pentecost. And to be honest, it's almost confusing the way it jumps around. And it's going to jump around during this whole time. Last week, we were in the first part when we were at the stoning of Stephen, right? Now, we're way into Paul's ministry. You know, last week, he was holding cloaks for the people, throwing rocks at Stephen. This week, he is in Athens on the other side of the Mediterranean. Paul, at this point, is a very seasoned apostle. He has gone everywhere. He has really done amazing things for Jesus. He has known some success. He has started many home churches, but he's also been driven out of a bunch of places. He's been driven out of Thessalonica, Philippi, Borea, and pretty much anywhere else that he preached. You know, he's had the ups, he's had the downs, and now he's in Athens, and that's the intellectual capital of the world at that time. Athens was where everything started as far as intellectual. You know, I've racked my brain trying to come up with a modern equivalent. Couldn't quite make one. You know, how about New York City, please? Uh, you know, yeah, there, there are some things, you know, Broadway is there, but it's not the intellectual uh center of the universe. Los Angeles, not even close. Maybe it's an international city, you know. London, oh please, England's not even a player anymore. Paris, intellectual, no way. Rude, yeah, but you know, you have to combine all of these cities that I've just thrown out there just to get to where Athens was. The residents of Athens, both foreign and domestic, would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing of something new. Something new excited them. They were one of these things that looked at the shiny objects and just went with it. You know, and so this is why Paul appears there. He's going to the Areopagus, 
or Mars Hill, and this is where all the gods hung out, and this is where they had all the idols and the shrines. Athens was very cosmopolitan. It had people from everywhere, all the nations in that part of the world, all the nations in the world, and every one of the peoples had their own gods. You know, that's something about people. We're, we're all desperately searching for something to believe in. In fact, the Athenians were kind of the opposite of our modern intellectuals. Have you ever heard someone say, I'm very spiritual, but I'm not very religious? Of course, yeah, we've all heard that. You know, that, That's kind of the new little hip thing now. But the people in Athens were very religious. They prayed to many gods but they just weren't very spiritual. And, and their God worship was very, very shallow because there were so many gods and, and they just kind of bounce around to what was the God of the week. Paul was very sharp. Paul was very smart. And, and he was able to talk to the people and he studied his audience before he spoke. He realized that that was a really big thing. He wanted to do his homework. So he appealed to the people here as a learned Jew, because he was. He was a very well-learned Jew, and he was a Roman citizen. He had all the bases covered. So he must be in the know, right? You know, he is this, he is that. You know, wow, let's hear what he says. You know, as we looked at the scripture today, notice he didn't use any scripture when he was doing his setup. Paul knew scripture. Paul knew the, the, the law. Paul knew uh, the prophets because he studied them all the time. But because he knew that the people he was talking to were not familiar with scripture. They were not familiar with the Jewish law. They were not familiar with the prophets. They, they just wouldn't understand. I may circle back to that later because I think we all make that mistake every now and then where we, we use things that people really don't understand and we try to make a point with it and it just kind of leaves them confused. You know, he doesn't really even talk about Jesus until the very end. Uh, you know, and, and Paul just thrived on Jesus. But instead... He uses things that were in the natural world. He uses things that's something that everybody would know. Who is God? Now, I got to tell you, I have a little issue with who is God because I think that's the wrong pronoun because I don't know if God is a who, but we'll go with that. So who is God? And he says that God is creator. God is holy. And by holy, he means it's, he's separate. He's not, he's, he's not like us. He's not served by human hands. God is life giver. And God is a relationship starter. A relationship starter. So Paul noticed that the appeal to the unknown God as he's walking through this hall of gods, when he's walking through all these gods that are set up, whether it be Roman gods, whether it be Greek gods, which are basically the same things, it just had different names. Whether it be Assyrian gods, whether it be uh, Mesopotamian gods, whether it be Egyptian gods, whether it be Canaanite gods, all these gods for Phoenician gods, or other gods for, that were coming into Athens from all over the world, each one had their god set up. And it may be a very minor god for wheat, or it may be something that they thought was the God of the God. But even in the Roman and, and the Athenian God gods, there are a lot of gods. And each one, even the big gods, don't control everything. But there's this one statue that he noticed that was for the unknown God. And he went with it because God is not anything we build a statue to. Our God is not something we build a statue to. So therefore, if we have this blank thing, is this God the unknown God? Hey, he jumps on that. And then once he starts talking about that this God is, is you know, you don't know him, 
because this God is the one God. All these other gods are just something that you made up to kind of help you through the seasons, to help you uh, with reproduction, with help you during wartime. But this unknown God, this God that you don't understand, that is the one true God. And then he jumps to what? He jumps to resurrection. And because this is all that matters to Paul. Jesus is the culmination of all philosophies because of resurrection. So Paul sees that and all he's speaking about, and this is when he brings Jesus. This is when he brings the great God, the one God, the I am. He says, this is the only God that we worship. These others are just idols and small things. So in wrapping up, there's a question that I need to ask. Do we as the church continue to seek out God, the one God, uh, the God known and the God unknown? Or are we convinced that we have found him? Are we convinced that he's in our back pocket? Are we convinced that, that, that we have him put in a, in a place where he can do all the things just for us? Do we retreat to the shrines that we have built? Or do we seek out God who sought us first? And what is the God that we seek? Is this the God that just helps us be us and that gives us power? Or is this the God of all nations? Is this the God for, for my family, for my family, that the people that look like my family, or even the people that don't like my family? The unknown God is the known God for me, and he is the God for all. Go, fight, win. Amen.
So, go out into the world showing the world God's love and God's grace, not just by the things that you say, but by the things that you do. Go fight, win. Amen. Everything he touches turns to gold. A regular King Minus. <laughs> Tater, it's pronounced Midas. I don't hear the difference. <laughs> da da da. That concludes this online service here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. I just want to reinforce a couple of things. Number one, if you're in the Lufkin area and you wish to worship with us uh, in person, our physical address is 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. It is the intersection of Hank Street and the South Loop. Also, if you want to uh, make an offering to us, you can send that to St. Paul's United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code is 75902. We would love for you to come and join us. Tell your friends, uh, and we appreciate you taking time out and being with us today. Go fight, win. Amen.